Welcome to a new test and teardown video. This time it's a hammock component tester HZ65-3. And the cool thing about this one is the test currents. Um, you will find many of these component testers in uh, yeah, many of the old analog hammock oscilloscopes and th this is a very uh, effective way to measure and compare and find faults in components so uh, definitely uh, that is a, a cool thing but this one is a little bit special because you can adjust the currents 550 or 200 milliamp test current and you can plug in transistors and diodes and such right here and you test only of course one way in the diode or in the transistor at a time and then you simply switch the socket contacts here you can also use um, the two banana plugs at the side and plug it into our circuit board the idea with the banana plugs that is if you have two equal um, boards one is working and one is not working you don't have the schematics and you are kind of clueless what is going on and you want to find the fault all you have to do is, of course, select the lowest current here. You don't want to kill your circuits, right? But then you simply pinpoint in the area the same points on two different circuit boards and compare the results. And once you find something that is different or very different, you know you have very get, you're getting really close to uh, your problem. So that is also a way to use these uh, kind of sweepers. So you see here we get the voltage and the current output to uh, an analog uh, scope in XY mode. And um, it's using, of course, mains frequency as the sweep frequency. So it's a sine wave sweep. It just goes back and forward in the voltage. And it's, of course, the same in current. Current is just some uh, resistors that will uh, couple the measured current to your X and Y probes uh, or inputs on your scope. So I think it is a little bit funny to see how this uh, is uh, actually useful and still working. And there is a little thing that I always do when I perform my first visual. That is the mains voltage selection. And this one, look at this sticker, is set for 115 as default. And nobody added any um, any labels or stickers or anything like that so i am of course a little bit worried about that but i see a cable that isn't really you know 150 land <laughs> see so i'm very very sure it was uh, configured correctly but i need to open and inspect this so if i compare this picture with the manual I'm sure this one is exactly as what they say is 230 volts. So this is perfect. And the fun thing is, if you look at the solderings on this zero ohm resistor, it was never ever desoldered. So it was from factory 230 volts. So uh, why the 150? 15 sticker here. I mean, this is something is um, a little bit weird. Well, well, what else can we say about this? Uh, the circuit is way more complex than I first anticipated. I underestimated this. <laughs> I had the idea we only would find two or three resistors and stuff like that. And I mean, we got some op amps here tl082 741 op amp tons of transistors and diodes and stuff it's way more complicated okay so it's running on on plus minus voltage uh -huh. isn't there any so that will be the main transformer and that will be the outputs for my scope. I better try and boot this up and see what is going on. 
So now I have connected uh, the two outputs, X and Y. So this is the voltage. Voltage is on channel one, so that is the yellow channel. And uh, I didn't connect any um, test objects yet. But what you should uh, see here on the screen, that is the about 48 hertz. And that is a little bit funny. So this thing is not sweeping using mains frequency directly. And it's not because there's something wrong with my mains frequency. I can hit setup for my trigger. Instead of uh, channel one, I can go to AC line. And then you'll see I have 50 hertz of mains frequency. So there's probably a pretty good reason why they're doing this, but <laughs> it's maybe to make it very um, complicated. <laughs> I don't know. Well, why the heck is th is that? If, yeah. Well, anyway. So let's uh, try and play a little bit with this in normal scope mode, just to start uh, with. So this is unconnected. Um, now you just see the test voltage going positive and negative, and there is no current. So now I just connect a uh, 4148 diode. And let's have a look. It's in the forward direction. So when the voltage is positive, it is clamped to the forward voltage of the diode. And there you see, there's a, of course a forward current going through the diode. And this we can of course represent in a the XY mode and this way generate a nice sweep. And let's see if we can figure that out. So in XY mode, and this is how you adjust this. I don't know if you can see this tiny little blue line here, but that is the XY mode. I have uh, carefully adjusted um, this line to be in zero. So this is, of course, up and down is the current. And this is the positive test voltage, negative test voltage. So if we connect our diode again, we will see when the voltage goes positive, it cannot go any more positive because the diode is directly over the test system or over the test readout is where my component is, right? So, so this little, it is of course a little bit over zero and that is the forward voltage of the diode and then current just goes up and up and up. And you can of course scale this and you can calibrate this by adding a known resistor and then you will know exactly what is the scale and all that. Voltage here is quite easy because this is definitely, uh, hang on, let me see if I can show this better. So now we have zoomed in a lot and you can see down here the scalings. I don't know, this is a little bit out of focus. I'm sorry about that. It wants to focus on stuff that is in the middle. But I can, I can tell you it says 550 uh, millivolts per division, and you need to multiply this by 10. And then you have the right voltage. So it's 500 millivolts here, and then a little bit more, so it's probably six 700 millivolts, the forward voltage of the diode, which I think is uh, pr uh, quite normal for a 4148 diode. I have, of course, also scaled the current, and the, I think the I am in the five millivolt, no milliamp current for the probably the maximum or the full. Let's see how that works. See up here, so that will be five milliamps. Otherwise, I would be a little bit disappointed. Okay, so now I have calibrated the voltage for the correct voltage per division. And now I want you to see something really cool with this diode. So this is five milliamp test current. So what happens if I crank up the test current to 50 milliamps? Now you see we have more forward voltage over the diode. But how about 200 like that? So 200 milliamps. It's of course a little bit too much for this diode. I'll test here with my fingers. Yeah, I can even feel it's getting a little bit warm. So this is a good sign. I think this unit really works. <laughs> and now you can see 
exactly what is going on. I kind of like it. Let's try a more interesting component. I don't know if you can figure out exactly what I'm doing here. So now it's not connected and we have a line that goes all the way around and we have zero in the middle. And uh, that is one of those tunnel diodes. Hey, <laughs> they are so funny. And so when voltage goes positive and negative, it goes into all sorts of funny oscillations. And this is how we see this as all those funny dots and noises and things that goes on here. And it's because it goes into all sorts of, uh, it's a negative impedance uh, diode. It's yeah, very interesting. I should probably make a video about these one day. But uh, yeah, this is, <laughs> this unit is definitely not designed for tunnel diodes. But there you have it, one little tunnel diode. And there you have it in normal oscilloscope mode. I'm still measuring on this uh, tunnel diode. And uh, here we see the oscillations that this uh, diode is uh, generating. Obviously, this is a uh, bandwidth limited to all the op amps and uh, stuff on, in this uh, hammock um, component analyzer. But it's still fun to see. Uh, it goes uh, super crazy. I didn't find a schematic in the manual that I was able to find, but I uh, found a lot of uh, really cool um, scope picture examples of uh, different uh, measurements. And I find it a little bit funny that they say is silicon diode. Look at that uh, picture here. <laughs> and then, I mean, voltage goes positive and then nothing happens. And then voltage goes negative and then all the current happens. I mean, so they flip the, di the diode the wrong way. And then this is one of their examples. I don't know. Why would you do that? So that is a little bit funny, but... Obviously, the user will know when you're measuring diodes if it's positive or negative. And here you can see how you measure capacitors or inductors or whatever. It's, you know, of course, you're going to see the same with uh, inductors as you will with uh, capacitors. You will get circles. And the different dimensions of your circle is, of course, the value of that component. So that's uh, quite clear. You can easily uh, compare known to unknown uh, this way and easily figure out what you have got. So uh, yeah, I kind of like this uh, this instrument. Uh, that's a, r a very useful thing back in the 80s and 90s or something like that when this was definitely a thing. So that is all I wanted to show you for this time in this tiny little video here. So thank you very much for watching. And I hope you had a little bit of fun.